Hello guys and good evening and welcome to this the Global View Meetup. My name is Simone and I'm a senior software engineer at Distal Lab. Our sponsor today is Distal Labs, your partners in modern digital transformation. We specialize in mentorship, consulting, training and staff augmentation for enterprise organization. Find out more at distallabs.com or send us an email at hi at distallabs. So we run quite a few events and these are just a um, handful of the next event that we're gonna run up. I want to give um, some emphasis on the monthly mentoring session uh, for women in tech. And then, um, you know, because I'm a view developer, I quite like it. Um, next month, we have even you joining us for uh, an Ask Me Anything um, session. So, you know, if you have any question to do, just come around and join me. I have already 10 questions written down. So um, you will have plenty of questions to ask, answer for us. If you have to uh, find any of these, you can go on our website where there are all links to the different event. Um, and, you know, it will be great to see you there as well. Something else as well we do is um, JavaScript Marathon. And we're hosting our next JavaScript Marathon next week on September the 23rd. JavaScript Marathon is a full day of live training on various framework and topics. This month, we have training on React Native, Native Angular libraries, JavaScript animation, TypeSafe database, and Blazor WebAssembly. So sign up at javascriptmarathon.com. The site is over here. Today, we have two fantastic speakers, as always. We got Igor, that is a software engineer and end studio. And then we got Tracy, that is web application architect and Bloomberg Industry Group. Both joining and happy. And let's see our schedule. As we all know, we have a couple of um, uh, minutes now where I'm going to share you um, how it's going to go and how, how everything is going to run out today. Then we're going to have our first talk that is going to give from Igor that is titled Native Script View and You. Nice title, by the way. Easy to say. And then the next one is going to be Tracy on HTML email with Vue.js. And then at the very end, we're going to have a closing note. I want to remind everyone that usually we prefer for people to uh, ask the question at the very end. So if you do have a question, you're more than happy to write it in the chat because I'm going to play around with the chat and ask any question that I can answer myself. But then we're going to leave the question for the actual speaker at the end of the talk. So feel free to write whatever you want. At the very end of it, we're going to go through those, um, the question that you may have. Uh, as I mentioned, two nice, lovely talks. So what's the point to speak more? He said in my voice, you want to hear the speaker voice. So we let everything, we leave the screen to Igor. And let's go. Let's see. Screen shared, nice and green. So nice and green. Good indeed. So you take over, Igor. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. This is uh, really nice to be here and an honor to, to be able to present something to you guys. Um, so my talk is called Native Script View and You. Um, uh, my name is Igor. Um, I'm from Hungary. I work at NStudio. Uh, we recently took over the development for Native Script. So we are in huge projects lately. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Um, feel free to reach out anytime. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Um, I'm here to talk a bit about Native Script and actually going to demo some uh, new Vue 3 stuff uh, a bit later. So let's let's start what Native Script uh, is in, in, in a couple uh, brief points. So Native Script actually <clears throat> allows you to access native APIs right inside your JavaScript. Uh, it actually renders native UI elements, and, and you can actually use uh, different frameworks of your choice, like Vue, Angular, React, well, uh, native script core, uh, Frank native. I mean, there's a couple. You can really choose whatever you like. So um, direct ex access to native APIs, uh, right side JavaScript. So this is an example. I I was looking at uh, Stack Overflow the other day uh, for for a client project. We were looking at the Objective C snippet you see right here. This is used for uh, manipulating like a UI image and rounding off the corners. And what's really nice with native script that uh, we can actually take the, the Objective C code and, and write it as JavaScript and it just works. Like it, it's, it's a bit magical if, you've, if this is the first time seeing this kind of stuff. 
But uh, if, if you look at the two samples, you can see that we're basically doing the same thing in the two. Uh, we grab the UI graphics uh, image context. Uh, we begin it with some options. Uh, I guess no in, in Objective C is uh, just regular Boolean in JavaScript. Uh, we can then call uh, any native methods. Uh, I guess the calling syntax is different. Uh, in Objective C, we use the, the square brackets. Uh, in JavaScript, we just use dots. But I mean, it, it really shows how uh, interesting native script is that it really maps one to one to Objective C. And the same can be uh, said for Android, but uh, I don't have a good example right now. Um, the second point is that native script actually renders uh, native UI elements. So for example, let's continue with the analogy of images. Uh, if we have an image uh, and we want to, like in native script, we, we write the image tag, give it the source. That's actually going to render a UI image view on iOS, and it's going to render an Android widget image view on Android. Um, you're also able to choose your own framework. So if, if your stack is like a React uh, web front end, you can actually use React with native script or Angular or Vue Svelte. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to focus on Vue, so since that's my talk, really. Uh, so native script Vue has been around since uh, 2017. Uh, I believe I I had my first commit to the repo in uh, April 2027, uh, I mean 2017, and I've been maintaining it ever since then. Um, we had two major versions, so 1.0, 2.0, and it's all based on Vue 2.x. Um, you can actually find docs and info um, on nativescript-view.org website. And you may be asking, like, the hype is really around Vue 3 nowadays, and and yeah, yes, we are absolutely going to support Vue 3 uh, as soon as we can in native script. Uh, you can actually follow the progress on GitHub, uh, which is currently under my private uh, account. So native script view next is the repo where you can uh, follow the, any progress I make. And a semi, I guess, tiny announcement is that you can actually play around with it today. Uh, and just a fair warning, it's really uh not even in alpha stage yet it's, it's like more a uh, developer preview i just published the npm I, I believe two days ago so uh you can install native script first uh, globally then you can uh, just create a new uh view 3 app with native script using the native script view template blank which looks like something like this uh, you run the command it pulls in the template, installs some dependencies. I mean, the usual stuff. Um, actually, going to demo this in just a second. So, what's happening here is actually that uh, native script, the CLI is pulling down the template, uh, generating some configurations, scaffolding a new blank project, uh, pulling the native script view 3.0 dependencies. And we should have a my view 3 app uh, app scaffolded now. So let's let's look at how this actually looks like. So I'm here in the view meetup folder. I have the my view 3 app I just created. Uh, and I can just go into the directory. This is a new project. I can just run NS run iOS. And I'm going to use the no HMR flag. That's because uh, HMR is somewhat working with Vue 3, but it's still work in progress. So I guess it's uh, safer to just disable it for now. So as soon as I run this, um, native script is going to look for devices, uh, actually build out the native uh, like Xcode project, and compile my uh, view files and JavaScript into like a bundle using Webpack. And it should launch the app in, on the similar in just a second. There we go. So let's do some interesting stuff. So the main entry point is this is view three. So 
we have the new create app API. And what's specific to NativeScript is the start method. We don't actually mount things. Uh, we have to start the app, but that's just a minor detail. Um, okay, let's let's see. So I've already kind of cheated here. I have prepared some code. Let's look at the image first. Uh, let's, let's just add a new row. So if I add a new image, this is actually my uh, GitHub profile picture. Uh, it renders a UI, uh, UI, native, UI image view. Yeah, we are on iOS. So this is not like a web view or anything like that. This is an actual native view. And I was going to show you uh, the example I had on my slide with the native code, which is the uh, Objective-C code, we had the round corner image, uh, just as a reminder, this one. So I was going to show you how that actually works in practice, because seeing it on the slide, maybe it doesn't give it enough justice. So let's just add a tap event handler. handler. Uh, this is also specific to native script. We don't have click events, but we use tap events instead. So. We're going to call the make it rounded method, which is in, uh, then going to call the rounded corner image, passing it the native uh, instances. So in this case, uh, we have to grab the iOS UI image from the. Uh, so args is kind of the event when we tap something, object is the actual view wrapper. So that's the image. Uh, image source is like a uh, native script's way of uh, denoting like a cross-platform way of telling uh, or implementing different image sources. So it can come from URLs, uh, native images, file system, any, anywhere really. So we are grabbing the iOS uh, key, which is actually a UI image. And we're going to pass it to the rounded, round cornered image method and give it a 100 radii. And then we get the result back. And we just have to convert it back to an image source and set it to the image source. So if I did things correctly, if I tap on the image, it should round the corners. So this is actually calling Objective-C APIs right inside my JavaScript. And I can really uh, show you this is actually working. I can change the radii to 150. Uh, my app restarts, and now it's more rounded, I guess. And uh, I guess uh, this is a good segue that you don't actually need to write code like this in native script. So uh, what's like this is the job of the native script core. So you can actually do all of this using uh, CSS classes. So I just prepared like a simple rounded class here uh, at the bottom, which actually just sets the border radius and width height. And we should actually see a similar result. So. For, for most cases, you usually just rely on CSS. You don't need to write uh, platform-specific code. Where um, this example uh, shines is if, for example, you want to actually uh, manipulate an image, uh, round off the corners, and then uh, generate like a PNG that you can upload to your backend, uh, you can actually do that easily using uh, native APIs. And from the image source, you can actually get like base 64 strings or anything uh, that you can pass back to your back end. So it's really just uh, the f flexibility that it gives uh, when it comes to platform APIs. You don't have to rely on native script actually updating to support latest platform features. You can uh, just get in there and, and just write uh, JavaScript, which uses platform APIs. Um, I guess the next thing I was going to showcase that, like this is all the old view to object syntax, but I was going to showcase that uh, we can actually use the new uh, composition API and the setup function. So let's create a new component. I'm going to count, uh, call it the counter page.view. And we have a template tag, uh, we have a page tag. Uh, we can also assign an action bar. Action bar, uh, we can do a self closing title. My awesome uh, counter, and then we have to uh, give the page some content. So I'm going to use a, 
a grid layout. Uh, for this grid layout, we're gonna use, I guess, two rows, so rows, auto, auto, label, you know, text is, is gonna be counter 50, and let's add a button. I can do text, decrement. And if we actually want to show this page, uh, we have to navigate to it. So I'm gonna add a tab handler to the uh, info message. So add tab, uh, do navigate to counter page, for example. And we just have to add like a method to navigate to counter page. The API is this dot navigate to counter page. And for it actually to work, we have to import the counter page. So import counter page from, oh, should be from here. And if I did everything correctly, if I tap on the uh, button, I should see my counter page. Ah, there's a small issue. The things are in a single row and I just actually wanted them in two rows. That's because I forgot to set the row. So I'm gonna do row zero, that's the default, but I quite like to be explicit. So if I go back now um, and navigate to the counter page, we see we have a counter and the decrement button, but this doesn't do anything yet. So let's just add like a script block and use the new uh, composition API. So we're gonna use the setup function and here we're gonna actually use a ref. So import ref from native script view, const counter equals ref, uh, let's do 50. And then we can just you know, return uh, the counter and uh, on that decrement event handler, which is gonna do counter dot value, which is a new, which is the composition API and the new view API. And let's just make the templates dynamic. So we're gonna bind the text to like a, string liter literal and we're gonna inject the count here the counter here and lastly i, I was gonna do a tap handler and call on decrement so if everything is correct we should have a working countdown so as soon as i tap the decrement button it's gonna update the ui and this is all native so ui text view and UI label, I believe. And I guess just to, as a nice touch, we're gonna use some CSS. Uh, so we're gonna do like a dot counter. Let's do color. Let's do the view green. Uh, font size, I guess 24. And we're gonna do text align center. And we're gonna apply this class to the label. So class equals counter. So when the app restarts, we, we see it like a pretty cool looking counter, not very useful, but it really shows that building native UIs and apps is, is really similar to what you do on the web. And, and I guess this is really nice about uh, not native script that you don't really have to learn Objective-C or Java, you can actually just build your app uh, just by learning uh, a couple of layouts, couple special elements, and and there's a huge marketplace of plugins you can pull in to, for different controls, like, I don't know, sliders, uh, slide views, and things like that. It's, it's really flexible and cool. So, um, I was gonna mention that we also released Native Script 7. Uh, I think three weeks ago. And uh, Native Script 7 is a, is a huge uh, milestone, at least for us. Uh, we introduced a new consolidated Native Script config that just um, simplifies uh, like all Native Script projects. Uh, like previously we had 
uh, different package JSONs, NSconfig JSON. Like it was all uh, a bit all over the place, or you could change some of the things. Some of the things need to be, needed to be changed somewhere else. So we really tried to uh, make it as simple as possible. And by using TypeScript as a config, it it really gives the benefit of uh, auto completion. You can you can actually have uh, your editor or ID suggest uh, and show docs right in line, which is pretty cool. Um, we also introduced the new V8 runtime for iOS. So far, we've been using the JavaScript core runtime, and V8 is is uh, is just out of beta, and and it's a uh, it's using the Google uh, V8 JavaScript engine and. In our tests, it's even faster in many cases, and and it's it's really nice to to have both Android and iOS using the same JavaScript engine, so we don't have so that we don't end up with different uh, feature sets supported by iOS and Android. Uh, another thing we did is we streamlined the core repo for the native script uh, core, which really made it much easier to contribute to uh, the framework. Uh, we we moved to like a mono repo setup, and we have uh, really nice uh, commands to build every piece of the framework yeah, you, you want to work on. And there are a bunch of other quality of life improvements with it. Uh, that's all noted in the release notes. So next, uh, here's a little demo of the config. You can actually get your editor to suggest uh, different values, and you get a few. Click on them, like go to the definition. You can actually have uh, a decent idea of what each configuration option does in the config, which uh, compared to what we had before was you had to go through the docs and find uh, the name of the key you have to add to the package JSON. And if you mistype something, it, it doesn't warn you. So this is uh, all in all a really nice uh, quality of life improvement I'm really excited about. And, and obviously, there's a lot more to native script. This was just um, a quick introduction, just, just to give you an idea that what native script is all about. You can learn more about native script view specifically on the native script view.org website and native script itself uh, in, on the native script.org website. Uh, you probably have to look at both of them, like they do cover different parts of the framework. Um, and if you have any questions or uh, you want to give it a shot, make sure you join our community Slack. Uh, I'm usually around. If you have any questions, I would say uh, within an hour, I, I would probably get back to you. So uh, make sure you you come to the Slack channel. And specifically, I guess, the uh, day view channel. And one last thing, you're awesome. Thank you for listening. And that's pretty much all I had for you today. That was an amazing talk, Igor. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was, you know, I have to be honest, I tried uh, native script in the past, so I've used it as well, but it's nice to see, you know, the, the progress you did since I used it and the view three as well. And as I mentioned in the chat as well, the fact that you were using the composition API. Uh, you know, whenever you go on the internet, they're always the same example of this is a search, this is a it's pretty, but it's nice to actually say things, so well, well done. Um, I don't know if anyone has any question. Um, I do have a couple. I like to keep my question, but if anyone has any question within the audience, uh, just post it into the comments and I will happily say it. Um, so I had two questions. You kind of answered one question already, that is if someone wants to get started, what do you suggest, in, what suggest them to actually go? Um, and I, you did say the, the two website, the native script and native script org. Anything else, any other resources or any other course that you would suggest that was really good? Sure, uh, there is a playground. So play.nativescript.org is a really nice and quick way to uh, try native script. Uh, you can actually just download a, a companion app on your phone and scan a QR code and, and test it right in your browser. So it's really nice to get your feet wet. That's amazing. And then my next question was, um, you know, it seems like you worked on the integration of the View 3 into the app. I know that with Vue 3, they changed the API quite a bit. So has that helped you? Was, it, was there many changes that you had to do as a maintainer? Or what would you suggest, as if anyone on the audience is actually maintained as well? 
So native script view 3.0 is, is a complete rewrite. We are using the new uh, custom render API that view provides. So, so it's a complete rewrite using TypeScript. Oh, nice. Wow. So for, for apps, I guess uh, there are some breaking changes once we have like a release. Uh, it's going to mostly be in the main JS where you have to change how the app is created. But that's, uh, I guess that's going to be automatically migrated at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the changes so we are don't, yeah. massive. Yeah, we use the create app instead of new view, but it's really simple yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. And then there is a question from Robertino here. Um, he's asking if the latest NS view 2.8 is fully compatible with NS 7.0. Yes, so uh, view 2.8.1, I believe, is the latest. That's for native script 7.0. And the 2.7.1 is for native script 6. Uh, I guess there is a breaking change between the two, but I just kind of wanted to keep uh, 3.0 for Vue 3. So that's why we have a slight breaking change in a minor version. OK. OK. Well, let's hope that the Vue 3 is coming up soon. So we're all hoping for that. Amazing. So yeah. if there are no more questions, what I'm, what I'm asking you, Agar, if it's possible, if you can post in the chat all those links that you shared in the slides, so you know the sure. Slack channel and all the things you share, that's fantastic. So people that come or later on, they can actually get it from the comments. That will be absolutely sure. fantastic. Perfect. Again, yeah. I think I'm telling you this for uh, from everyone. Thank you so much. It was a, an amazing delivery and great content. And Thank now you for from, having me. Pleasure. So from one amazing speaker to the next, Tracy. Great. So you can see my screen? We can well, we can see you for now, and I'm gonna add your screen now. Okay. Now we can all see your screen as well. I've got everything so guys, in full mode, so I don't know what's going on. OK, great, thanks. It's fine. So, so one second. I'm yep. going to get away from the stream and I'll leave everything to you. So okay. um, Tracy today is talking about HTML email with Vue.js. So if you've ever done email, I think we don't need to listen. So over to you. All right, thanks. All right, so I'm Tracy Olenka. I'm a Vue DC co-organizer, and I'm also a web application architect at Bloomberg Industry Group, but I'm just really a front-end web developer. Um, so before, when I was asked to do HTML email, I would jump for joy. No, I ran away as fast as I could. And so then Vue.js to the rescue. So I'm really excited to talk to you about um, HTML email with Vue.js. And like I said, I'm just really a front-end web developer. I'm not an HTML email expert, but I have been asked to do HTML email so many times. So the, the main thing about HTML email is that there are many desktop and web-based email clients that they don't really support today's web standards. So I like to say you need to code like it's 1999. And what I mean by that is tables are used for layouts. And since the standards aren't particularly followed by all the email clients, but what works in one email client isn't necessarily going to work in another email client. So what are you to do? Well, enter email frameworks. So we have uh, web application frameworks. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with those. Um, like we have, I'm thinking of, um, we have Twitter Bootstrap, we have Foundation. And what those frameworks do for a web application is they have a, a, a pre-made component that has been tested and works in all these different browsers and also in mobile. So e email frameworks are very similar. They have pre-existing components and they work in all these different email clients. The difference is there are a lot more email clients you have to concern yourself when you're doing email. And so one of these um, email frameworks is NJML. And it's fairly lightweight and it will compile your code into HTML email. So um, the, the only thing is that MJML doesn't really provide for dynamic data. It doesn't do your data bindings. So Vue.js does. We love Vue.js. Our developers know Vue.js, so let's use Vue.js. Right? But wait, Vue.js is designed to be used in a browser, right? So we're creating email. We create the email. It's not. It's static. It gets sent off its merry way. It ends up in somebody's email box. It's not going into a browser, well, unless it's an email client. So how do we do this? Well. Enter server side rendering in view server render. So we can use that to generate our email. And this wasn't my idea. Um, this is a link to a very simple POC, and I will collect all my links and send them in the com put them in the comments after I'm done. 
Uh, so this is a very simple POC. And basically, it's three, de three main dependencies. It's MJML, in view, in view server render, and that's pretty much it. So the way it works is you create your view app, and this, um, this template, this MJ section, is a component from MJML. And then you create the renderer, and then you take the renderer and you um, put the app through the renderer, and then uh, the renderer, the server renderer is going to add this data server render true, and this is used for client side hydration. We're not in a browser, so we don't care about that, so we can get rid of it. And then we take all that and we'll put it through MJML to HTML, and then poof, we have our HTML email. So we could take this whole concept and we can go ahead and build a, an app that's similar to our traditional view app. So if, if you notice that there's no view CLI, there's no um, template compiler, it's just flat, plain view and view server render and MJML. So we don't have those, um, uh, those nice things that view CLI gives us and the other things do, but we can still pretty much can create our app to be like a traditional view app that we're used to. And we can have our views, we can have our components, assets, and this is great um, when you have a lot of view developers, they're, they're familiar with this, so this is pretty easy for them to pick up. So um, you can wrap everything into a method for easy access, and this allows you to package all this into a um, dependency and that any app could, um, any app could use. And so uh, what I've done is I've changed things up a little bit. Um, that code that um, kind of went by fast, but the MGML, MGML body, MGML head, I put that all in this body component and I make a slot and I'll pass uh, most of the email content or email components through that. And then for the renderer, you really only need the view SSR outlet. So that's all I put. I try to keep this method that kicks everything off to be as um, slim as possible. So before I go any further, I just kind of want to go over this MJML syntax. Um, as I said before, you use tables for layout. So that's pretty much where we're constructing this, um, these components will eventually get turned into parts of a table somehow. Uh, so we have something MJ section component, which is basically think of it as a row. We have an MJ column. You could think of that as, as obviously a column inside a row. And then we have this MJ text component. And that's really where your plain HTML is gonna go inside. So I have an example on the right, and you can see uh, we have this MJ text, and you can see the strange stuff. Well, if you're used to doing CSS, this is strange. Um, padding equals 16 pixels, zero. So on these components, you pass in your styles. Your CSS, you pass it in through an attribute. Um, and inside this MJ text, uh, yeah, so, um, all these uh, components are going to have defaults uh, for a lot of stuff like padding, maybe font size, color. So if you want to override it, then this is how you would do that, is pass it in as an attribute. Um, so and inside this, you'll have your regular HTML uh, content, your reg regular HTML tags. And you'll see I have the data bindings for view in here. Pretty much is the only place that this can go. So anything you more or less want to be visible in your email has to go in this, HD, um, this MJ Text, there's a few exceptions, but pretty much that's where everything goes. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, if you wanted to have double, if you wanted to have two columns, you could do that. And what will happen is in a desktop, it will be, uh, you know, two columns and then it goes to mobile, it'll stack on top of each other, which is pretty much what you want. So this is nice because these frameworks do, this, they figured this all out for you. So I just want to go over um, this body component that kind of kicks it off. And I consider, I think of this like the index.html for the email. And one of the things I want to point out is this attribute. Um, this, in this attribute tag, this is where you can do global overrides to those default, st default styles that are classes, or excuse me, default styles that um, are on these components. So you can make it be padding zero or whatever you want to do. And that's a global for the column. If you want a global for all your components, all the MJML components, then you can use MJML all. Maybe you want a color, maybe you want a particular, particular font family. So you can do that there. The other thing to note is this MJ styles inline inline. So you put 
your style overrides on the MJ components as an attribute. But when you're inside, let's say MJ text, and you want to add some kind of styles, what do you do? Well, you would actually add the styles in this inline uh, section. And what will happen is MJ, um, MJML to HTML, that's the tongue twister, uh, will inline it. And this is really important because not all the email clients actually will understand the internal styles, the styles that are in the head. Um, particularly Outlook is a big offender of this. So you need to have all your styles in line. So if you put it in this um, style section here, it will inline it for you if you don't have to deal with it. So I have an example on the right. You have a style, um, a, you have a class headline and your style is font size. Any um, a regular HTML um, element will, that has a class headline, it will just automatically um, inject the style as an attribute. And so um, if this is um, if you have a lot of styles, you can see how a lot of um, extra styles. This is a really nice feature to have. Um, and the last thing is that um, the body by default. So the actual content that you will see of, of the email is going to be 600 pixels wide or narrow, however you want to look at it. You can override that um, just adding width to it with to the MJ body and this 600 pixels may seem kind of narrow but if you think about it if you're on a mobile device 600 pixels is fine and if you're reading it like say an outlook which in my case in Bloomberg that's what a lot of our uh, customers are on then you have you know folder column you have a column that has all the emails and the actual preview pane that you see the emails in isn't really that wide anyway Maybe it's 800 pixels wide. So it's pretty customary to do the width of the email, 600 pixels or 650. So I talked about the MJML uh, code, but we're in Vue, right? So let's, let's, let, let's use Vue. And the great things about doing this in Vue, besides this incredible developer experience, at least in my opinion it is, um, that we have access to things like computed properties. So we may be doing email and we're only generating it once. It's not dynamic, you know, the data is not changing. I found it really convenient to use computer properties to alter the data the way that I needed to alter it. So I thought that was really convenient. And what was really a great um, thing that Vue gave us is these dynamic components. So if you can imagine that you have an editor, um, you know, I work at a news organization, so we have an editor that is composing an email and there's different components. So maybe they have, or different sections, maybe they have an image section, an ad section, article sections, a featured article, you know, a fe article feed, you know, different components. They can actually in the CMS order the components or the sections the way they want. And then we can paint those in the order that they are delivered to us. So that means one day they can have one order and then the next day they can completely change the order of the email and um, deliver it to us and we'll paint it that way. So this really gives the power to the editors to kind of order the sections or components the way that they want. So I just wanted to give um, kind of a, uh, more understanding about the, how the tables are working. So I said everything's uh, tables or the layouts, but it's not just tables, it's nested tables. And so this is a very simple email. And what I did is I just put a border on the tables and there's five levels of nesting. And that's the way that it has to be done to deal with all the different email clients. Like tables are the only certain way to make the layout unfortunately, to make the layout work in particular emails, particularly Outlook. So let's take a look at some code. And actually, before I show you the code, I want to go take a quick look at the documentation for MJML. So this is the a text component. And you can see here's a list of all the default um, styles um, st or, or styles, either default styles or styles you have access to. And for whatever reason, the font size is default of 13 pixels, which I personally think is way too small. Um, but you can find the list here. You also have other components that are already created for you that you can use. And so for example, you have social component. So they figured out everything for you, how it works. Um, so these are, this is one thing that's really nice about um, these email frameworks or even a, a, even a web um, framework is that these components are figured out for you and um, you just have to, um, you know, 
they're pretty easy to use. So, um, okay. So before I show you the code, I actually want to show you the actual email that's generated. Um, so it's, uh, you know, the heading, um, this is jump links that will take you to different parts of the email. They don't work in mobile. So that's something that's going to happen. Sometimes something works in mobile and it won't work in, in a desktop. Um, so they'll take you, um, we have a, a featured article component with an image, um, list of articles, um, click on that. Theoretically, it'll take you to the actual article. Um, we have an image component, some more articles. And then down here at the bottom, all these articles have tags on them. So I go through and I collect all the tags and then I will combine them and, and, and put them here at the bottom. And theoretically, you could click on that and it can take you to some kind of, you know, a list of articles with that tag. Um, so now the code. Okay, so this is the renderer.js where everything kind of kicks off in a way. And it's just a method um, can be accessed. So we package as a dependency and then another um, a, another app can access it. Uh, so we pass in the payload, some options for um, MJML. And basically it's very similar to what, I mean, it's like what you're used to as a view component. I have, have a template. There's that body um, thing I talked to you about with the slot. Um, the real piece here is the email which we, I pass in the sections or the data. Um, and then let's just go take a look at that real quick. So this is in views. Um, so I pretty much structured just like a normal view um, app. Uh, so pretty much a regular component. Um, one thing I do do is I, all my components, I put in this component index so I don't have to keep bringing them in. Um, and then we have, I named the component, we have props and there's all the computed. Um, properties. So I go and I grab all the article tags and then I will dedupe them and then I will uh, sort them. Uh, this is the code that grabs all the jump, those jump links, you, um, jump links at the top. Uh, so it's just a really like a regular view app. It's just that you're going to have some of this MJML code sprinkled in. So this is the navigation, those jump links. I want to take a, let's go take a look at that. Um, so the props top topics we passed in. There's one thing that I discovered, and you notice that we're in we're not in single file components. We're using these temporary literals, and I so think that's why I had this issue with this. Is when I mix in an attribute, so I was trying to do uh, the actual links, um, and when I mix a, a, a when I mix a variable and an actual like string, actual text uh, through error, so that I just ended up making a method. Um, that was my workaround. There may be another way to do that workaround. Uh, one of the things is that um, when I have a list of something, even if it's straight across, like it's a, even if I make it horizontal in the end, I would normally do it as a, an unordered list. With, and then maybe I would flatten it out with a display um, CSS um, and CSS. But Outlook doesn't accept display Outlook doesn't i hate to keep picking on outlook but outlook doesn't accept a lot of css and one of the things it won't recognize is display so i had to put everything in the span so even though you have a framework like this that has figured a lot of stuff out when you're writing your regular um, html your regular element code you have to know something about what um the e different email clients will take and so in that respect, it really helps to know if you're targeting particular ones. So I know for me, Outlook 2016 is the, or yeah, 2016 is the most important. So it kind of helps to know what your most important email clients are too. Uh, but this pretty much just looks to me like a regular, you know, a view component. Um, you have your, you have your data bindings, you know, I'm looping through the topics. It's pretty standard component. So that's why I really felt it really easy once I got the hang of the MGML uh, syntax, then I found it really easy to develop. Um, so let's go back. So then let's go back to email. Okay, so the big part of this is the, the dynamic components that are gonna deliver the different sections. And there's the two sections I wanna highlight are the, uh, the featured section, which was that article at the very top with the image of the dog, and then the feed section, which is the list of articles. So the featured section, um, so this 
it's just pretty standard view component. But what I want to uh, point out is that you see how I, it's all in a section and all in a column. And then you have this MJ text because I'm going to have regular HTML. So I put the regular HTML in there and I give it a class because I want to style it in a particular way. And I'm going to have MJL inline these styles for me. Now, I could technically just write style and inline it myself, but that gets to be too cumbersome. I find it better to have it all in a, a style sheet and have MJML uh, do it for me. But then I have to close this text. And the reason I'm closing this text is I have an image. And this image cannot be, this image component is cannot be inside, it's a text component. It can be inside the column component. So there's things like that you need to, you know, to, to learn. Uh, usually if you do something wrong like that, um, you'll get an error. They have a, a validator and you'll get an error through the validator. And so then I have to open the text component again and then I put my, you know, my regular HTML on there and then I close it. And so the next section I want to, is the feed section. And this is the list of articles. Again, um, I have my MJ text, I have my regular uh, HTML code, I close it, and then I have my article component, and I'm looping through the articles just like just like I normally would, and then I, I send through as a prop the actual article data. I've closed this MJM text, so in the article component, I should have, I should be opening it up again, and sure enough, I open it up, and um, just regular normal view code pretty much. So um, so I've already run this. Um, I, I have a script that um, uh, a script that I created just to, a, a bunch of dummy data and I've already run it. And so let's see what this looks like. And this is what this, this isn't not minified. Um, so I mean you can take the white space out, but this is the the like re the human readable version. And so the first thing I want to show you, and I hope I don't give you all headaches from the scrolling, but this is pretty a pretty long um, bit of code here. And so it's going to go all the way down to 800 lines of code. And all these nested tables, I mean, I can't imagine having, I actually, I can't imagine having to do this from by hand because I've actually done this by hand before these uh, frameworks were any good. So I just, go to the top here and put out a couple of things. Um, I hope I'm not giving everybody a headache from that. Uh, so you're going to see in here a lot of this if, uh, I forget what these are called, but they're like these conditional tags really for Microsoft. Um, when Back in the day when we had IE7 and 8, we used these to, um, to specify stuff just for IE7 or 8 or whatever version we were on. So you'll see this MSO, which is Microsoft Office. Um, there's all kinds of code like here. There's this MSO. All this special code really for Microsoft Office, uh, it's just all, it's all over the place. Um, there's horrible, these horrible things important, like I just can't stand important, but you have to have it. It's the only way to make this stuff work. And so you can just scroll through and you can see all the inline styles that are there. And so this is the great thing, MJL does this all for you um, and you don't have to think about this. And I really found this to be a really great development experience. I've done email um, many times before, and I've just had just the we've done with Python, and I know some people do it with Java, and I just find as a front end developer, I really like to be in. I love Vue, I prefer to be in JavaScript. I don't want to be doing stuff in Python, so I just found it's a really good developer experience. So. Um, and I guess that's that's pretty much what I have to show you. There are some resources I want to point out. I do have a full-on uh, uh, repo or demo code that's more robust than what I showed you. There's the documentation. Um, so some of you might be familiar with uh, Can I Use that we, we use for regular for you know the um, browser to see what you can do for CSS for browsers. There's like the equivalent of that can I email. It's definitely not as filled out as the can I use, but it's a place to start. Um, you can also use email testing services. So there's email at acid and there's litmus.com. And I we use email on acid, so that's the one I'm the most familiar with. And what you do is that HTML that I showed you that that um, that MJL generates, you can copy that. They actually have an API, you can do it with the API, but you can also copy it. 
and you can put it into their system. And email and asset has, I think it's 85 different email clients that you can check with. And so you could you can do all 85 or you can pick the ones you're targeting. And what it'll do is it'll actually give you a screenshot of what it's going to look like. And it does a couple of things. It'll give you a screenshot and the actual email client. So if, you know, to say it's Outlook as the email client, it'll show you what actually the user will see kind of like the above the fold of the email. It'll do it with, with the images on. It'll do it with the images off because most of the images are usually turned off. So you want to know what it looks like when it's off. It'll do mobile. Um, it's actually a really good way to test your email and see what's going on. However, it's just screenshots. So I don't know of any service out there that actually will actually test that actually works. Like, you know, uh, like you click on something and it's doing what you're supposed to do. Um, so we have to do that manually. Um, we have testers that do that, but I also, you know, we have a number of people getting emails to test it and all the different devices. So, and that's the only way you would know, like jump links don't really work on, on mobile versus a desktop. So that's the one uh, thing is, unfortunately you have to kind of test that yourself. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'm on GitHub, CodePen, Twitter, and of course um, I'm core organizer of UGC. Uh, we have meets up every third uh, Wednesday of the month. In fact, we just had one yesterday. So uh, definitely why we're doing everything virtually, um, you're totally welcome. Please join us. And yes, thank you for listening to me. And um, I really hope that um, all you that dread HTML email, like next time you get asked to do it, maybe you won't dread it so much and you think, oh, maybe I can use Vue to do this. So. Hey, Tracy, that was a great talk. Uh, I think, you know, if you've been a, a, a developer for long enough, every one of us must have done a, you know, a lovely email <laughs> template with tables. <laughs> and then when you think you nailed it, yes. some executive will come back and say, oh, uh, he's not yeah. looking, he's not, doesn't look very great on my, you know, uh, Outlook 2000. Oh. Yeah, no, I actually just experienced this the other day with an Android. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's, so it's one that, of those. Yeah, so... Email and ask and all those things, they help a lot, but you know, it, it's not ever going to be perfect. So the experience will never be perfect, but I cannot, I mean, this last six weeks I've been doing this, I've been happy and that will not, ne that never happens to me <laughs> with HTML. Yeah. So, no, so, you know, anyway. you, you were, you were getting the power of the MJ framework. Yeah. Sorry, I don't remember the full name. With you, I think you did something fantastic. Yeah. That's great. And, and of course, I'm sure you can use another framework. That's just the one I picked. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's opening up people to the idea that they, this can yeah. actually be done. It's really, really supportive. So, yeah. you know, soon Vue's enough, gonna take the, to... Vue's going to take over the world. Just you watch. <laughs> We're waiting for Vue 3. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Yeah, you know, like, I, uh, like Igor uh, mentioned before, with the new way they restructure the library, it's actually much simpler for someone to go and write up the MJ, you know, kind of implementation of the email. You never know. In a couple yeah, of well, it could be you. Yeah, I think it'll be much better. Yeah. Something amazing. I cannot wait for that. So I would probably reach out soon enough because I, uh, uh, you know, my next milestone in the project is to implementing emails in Laravel with, oh, really? with you on the front end. So you never know. Oh. I can actually try and implement this for you. Oh, nice. And um, uh, also, you shared some links within the, yeah, the talks. Put them in the comments. Uh, I don't seem to have a. a no, box. send it privately. Yeah, send it yeah, privately it. and you can share the links. Yep. And also, um, as a, there was a question that was asked about um, where do people can start? So where do people can start to learn fundament? Say that again? Fundamental. Where can people start to learn the fundamentals about emails um, and things like that? Oh, wow. Okay, you're talking, okay, if you mean like just how to actually do emails and not about what the framework you're in, oh my God, you just, I don't know, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> no, there's actually, okay, so email and asset and litmus, they also have blogs and they're actually really good. So that's actually a good place to look at the blogs. They have really good tips on how to do things. Um, so that's one place to really start. Um, in fact, I would say those are the best two places to start. There is actually something called Campaign Monitor that has a lot of blogs, but unfortunately, there's, I've never seen anything like a class as how you do HTML. email. It's always been like blood, sweat, and tears. Um, so I think that's the best place to start uh, for that. Um, MJML, if you're going to use that framework, um, they do have some documentation. It's just not as good as Vue, but 
Um, and there is, uh, there's another framework. Uh, so foundation has a framework for the web, but they also have a framework for email. Um, you can look at, they will should have some stuff too. So, um, I wish there was a simpler way that just like the answer to fix all. I know <laughs> everyone, everyone hope there's a simpler way. <laughs> we know that, yeah. you know, Maybe with the end of support on Internet Explorer, something else will happen to the email. Come on, let's uh, You know that that's not happening in 2025. I found a couple of years ago, I dug deep into the Microsoft documentation and I found the date of 2025. I, I hope somebody can tell me I'm wrong and prove to me I'm wrong, but... <laughs> We'll, we'll catch up in 2025 then, and uh, we may have this talk again. It's going to be a completely different talk. We're going to use SVGs. We're going to use animation. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's another thing I didn't really stand up, talk about, but, like, there's a lot of things. Images are, like, you know, like, sometimes you have to use JPEGs. PNGs are starting to work now, but, you know, there's a lot of, like, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, um. Again, fantastic talk. Today was all about, you know, how to use Vue in different way, not just the standard way. So these are the kind of talk that they really like. And um, we also had a little insight of Vue 3, whether inside of, of MG, you know, on, on the email um, uh, email framework. So, um, you know, it's amazing. So thank you so much for joining both Igor, Igor and Tracy. And thank you everyone for joining on the YouTube, either online or if you're catching it later up. And don't forget that next month we do have even you uh, joining us for uh, Ask Me Anything. So, you know, get your question ready. It's going to be everything about you three for sure. So get your questions ready. I'll have lots of questions about the Composition API personally. And thanks so much for joining again. Bye-bye.